Numbers 11th chapter, 11th verse. It says, And Moses said unto the Lord, Wherefore hast thou afflicted thy servant? And wherefore have not found favor in thy sight? That thou layest up burdens of all these people upon me? Have I conceived all these people? Have I begotten them? That thou shouldest say unto me, Carry them in thy bosom, as a nursing father beareth the sucking child unto the land which thou swearest unto their fathers? When should I have flesh to give unto all these people? Moses is saying, I don't, I'm not a food lion or a Walmart. How am I going to feed all these people? For they weep unto me, saying, Give us flesh that we may eat. I am not able to bear all these people alone, because it is too heavy for me. And if thou deal thus with me, kill me. How many of us felt like that sometimes when stuff got so hard where you just, you know, we pray a foolish prayer and ask God to just take us out? We've said foolish prayers like, well, let me speak for myself. When I found myself before I knew the Lord, I, I, I used to pray these foolish prayers where I just wanted God to just take me out. And I pray thee out of hand if I found favor in thy sight and let me not see my wretchedness. And the Lord said unto Moses, gather unto me 70 men of the elders of Israel whom thou knowest to be the elders of the people and officers over them, and bring them unto the tabernacle of the congregation, that they may stand there with thee. And I will come down and talk with thee there, and I will take of the spirit which is upon thee, and will put it upon them, and they shall bear the burden of the people with thee, and thou bear it not thyself alone." Life has a way of humbling us, doesn't it? When you think about it. Life has a way of humbling you. You know, I know we've made these comments like I would never do this or I would never do that. How many of us made that statement? Come on, I'd never do this. But, you know, we should safely say by the grace of God I wouldn't do this or do that because all it takes is time and circumstance. And sometimes it just seems like so much stuff hits you all at one time, doesn't it? You know, when you look at these karate movies, you notice that you just have one guy and then he's surrounded by 40 guys. But notice one fighter goes in at a time to fight this guy. If 40 of them came, they probably could do something to this one guy, but they come one at a time. But unfortunately, life sometimes come at you one time, all at one time. And it just feels like it's just hitting you from the back and the front. And then you say to God, you know, God, I need some relief. And then we ask the question, why is God allowing me to go through this? Or why is God allowing me to go through that? Have we asked that question? But we know we call God the great architect, right? It's like when an architect makes this building, when he built this building and he designed the building, he knew how much weight that it can bear. He knew that it would be able to hold this speaker up there. He knew it would be able to hold these lights just by looking at the specs. When you look and you read the, 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 the study of, uh, when you do the study of Job, you notice, you know, this guy was hit with all these situations in life. And then when it got so bad, you know, even his friends didn't support him. He didn't find support in his household. But all these things hit him all at once. But Satan came and and, you know, of course, we know the story. And Satan said, well, because you got a hedge around him, if you put that hedge down, he'll curse you to your face. So we think Satan knows so much about us, but Satan only knows what you tell him. Because, see, if Satan knew that, uh, that all of this was so with Job, he would have known that the first time he tried it wouldn't have worked. He would have known that, wouldn't he? So now he come, well, you know, skin for skin, you know. So, you, so God allowed him to touch his flesh, but not his soul. You know why? Because God checked the specs. So he knew what that brother can bear. Like a lot of us, God knows what we can bear. But we have a tendency of trying to live life without life. We live life without life, and we try to tackle these situations alone. And then we put God on the back burner. 
But of course we can't bear these things without Jesus Christ. So if, if there's anyone sitting in here today that have not accepted Christ as Lord and Savior, you're going to go through some stuff and you don't have the support that you need. Because only God can fight this battle for you. Because he already defeated Satan in one. And Satan been fighting for thousands and thousands of years. So he knows how to get you. He watches you. He studies you. He don't sleep. He goes to and fro trying to find out who he could destroy. And, but he don't know the specs like God knows the specs. See, Satan look at what you're doing now. Every time you make a mistake or you trip up in life, he goes right to God and says, look at what Brother Brown did or look at what uh, Brother Leroy did. But God is not looking at that. He's looking at the finished product. That's what he's looking at, the finished product. So God allows these situations in life to get us to where he wants us to be. He allows these things to happen to us to get us to where we need to be. And I don't know about you, but I felt like Moses here, you know, uh, God, why are you allowing me to go through this stuff that I'm going through in life? I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, God, but why am I going through this stuff? And we don't see everything God sees in us, you know. We don't see everything what God sees in us. Uh, there might be something in there that God is trying to get out the way. He's trying to move away from us. And God is trying to get us in a position in our life where he moves us from faith to faith. If you recall when Moses and the children of Israel, when they were going through the wilderness, you know God presented himself to them. By day he was a, a whirlwind and by night he was a pillar of fire. But if you all recall when Satan, well I call him say he was a type of Satan, but when uh, Pharaoh was on his back, the pillar picked up. And where did the pillar go? Do y'all know the story? It went behind him. So they no longer saw him anymore. But all through that story, God always told them to let him fight the battles for them, right? God always told them, let me fight your battles. Be still and see the salvation of the Lord. I'll fight your battles. So God is showing them that, look, I'm trying to move you from faith to faith. Before we were saved, we used to go through life and if uh, we didn't see it, we didn't believe it. We had to trust, I mean, we had to use our eyes and we trust our eyes and we trust what we heard. But God was bringing us from a place of seeing things to just believing what he said. I will never leave nor forsake you. Sometimes it don't, you don't see that, do you? It looks like you all alone, fighting a battle. God left you. But what should we rely on? We should rely on God of what he said. Uh, there was a, uh, my wife uh, rents an a office space in this building. And I came there one night and she was talking with the landlord. And they were standing up there talking, so I came in and I sat down. And he was, you know, making a statement that, yeah, I believe in God, and you know, God has been good to me, and yeah, I'm, I'm saved, and I'm born again, and he's made all these claims, but he don't believe what the Bible says. And this is what he verbally told me. He said because it was written by a man, and he don't believe it. So I said, so how do you, you know, how do you know uh, what God thinks? What God says, where do you go? So he said, well, I just, the Holy Spirit leads me. The Holy Spirit leads me. How many times where you're, you think you're led by the Holy Spirit and it's not even really the Spirit? You know, God said, my ways are not your ways and my thoughts are not your thoughts. So where, where do you go? How do you know when you're really doing wrong? I know, I mean, I know above the surface you know when you do wrong. But how do we really know what God thinks? Because this book right here is the mind of God. It's the mind of God revealed. That's why I said bring your book. You got people sitting up in this church right now. 
who's probably been approached by Jehovah Witnesses. And there has been there have been some that were here. And I know some of you know them that are not here anymore because they were persuaded to go elsewhere. But how do you do that if you study in the word of God? How could another religion tempt you to go outside of what you know God to be? Unless you study the word of God. So if you come in here without your book and the machine here breaks, how do you know that I'm telling you the truth? If you don't study the book, how would you know? How could you lead somebody else? How would you know? A lot of us sitting in here right now, we, we hold on to our past and we, we don't amount to be much in life because we still holding on to the things that we used to be. A lot of us in here used to probably be addicted to pornography and we're holding on to that and don't think that we're able to go out and witness to somebody or a lot of us here are holding on to the fact that maybe you um, were addicted to drugs or alcohol. Maybe you was a liar, maybe you was a whoremonger. You know, uh, I mean, I've heard some women say, oh, I've never no prostitute. i will never prostitute. But then the same women that I've known that have a man shacked up with them to pay the bills. See, when you look at the prostitute on the corner, she just got the sign. But now if you got a man shacking up in your house and you keeping them there to pay your bills, you just don't have the sign. No difference. You see, so... Uh, a lot of us are sitting here holding on to those things and we are never amount to be much. But do you know that when you accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have all that you need? Amen. Do you know that? You have all that you need. Amen. And God knows the specs. So if God allows something to happen to you in your life and you get to the point where you want to take your life then you really need to get on your knees and ask God to reveal how strong you really are. But now, if you're just relying on your own strength, yes, you are weakling. But if God came into your life, Satan doesn't have a chance with you. But now, if God allows Satan to, to kill your flesh, he just allowed you to enter into your blessing, hasn't he? He says, when should I have flesh to give unto all the people? For they weep unto me, saying, give me flesh that we may eat. I am not able to bear all these people alone because it is too heavy for me to bear. How many signs did God show Moses already? How many times did God reveal himself to Moses already? Didn't God reveal himself? Drop the staff on the ground and the staff turn into a snake. Touch it and pick it back up and it's turned into a staff. God revealed himself. God came to him in a burning bush without the bush ever being consumed. He done saw the power of God. How many of us saw the power of God in our lives and we still question? God, I can't do this alone. I can't do this by myself. But the same God that delivered you before will deliver you again. The same God, he never changes. See, he's not like people. He don't sway from left to right. You ain't got enough money to buy him or no lands to entice him because he owns it all. Amen. So if the same God that delivered you the first time, just think about it because there was a time you used to bypass the church and go on to the juke joint. Y'all remember them days. But until something happened in your life, nobody would help you. But so you came into the house of the Lord. You didn't came here because, you know, of your own, uh, well, how should I say, because you just felt that that's what you needed to do. But the Holy Spirit led you here. If God didn't lead you here, you would have never been here. Notice he didn't do anything new. Where did he took the Spirit from? Where was the Spirit at? It was upon who? It was upon Moses. He didn't do anything new. Moses already had in him enough to be shared to who? Seventy who? Seventy elders. Look at what he had already in him and he didn't even know it. If you knew how much power that you had right here today, it probably would allow you to get puffed up. Because even Paul prayed three times. Take this away, but what did God say? My strength is made perfect in your weakness. 
So Moses already had enough in him to be shared among 70 people and still had enough left. Ain't God powerful? See, that's why he didn't do anything new. When God created Adam, where did he took Eve from? Where did Eve come from? He didn't, God could have went and made her the same way that he made, uh, made Adam, but he didn't. Because Adam already had what he needed. Where do you think the nation comes from? A nation a people come from. When the Bible says that we were created in God's image, God was showing you what's already in heaven. There ain't three images. When you look in the mirror, how many images do you see? So God took from Adam what was in him already. He didn't do nothing new. And God is telling us that today. We already have what it takes, those of us that have accepted God as our Lord and Savior. We have all that we need. But Satan will come to you and try to manipulate your mind. Manipulate what you see. Manipulate what you hear. So that's why you can't trust everything that you see. Because, because what you see all the time doesn't go along with what God said. I don't know where the rent money going to come from. I don't know where it's at. I don't have it. But God knows where it's at. Didn't God say that, that, uh, that he would never leave nor forsake me? He would supply all of my needs? See, so God has to allow you to go through some things so you can see the power of God. You will never know how powerful God is if you've never been through anything. You will never see the strength of God at work if you've never been through trials and tribulation. You will never see the power of God if you were never hungry. You will never see the power of God if you were set up in a situation like Moses was. A million and a half people, how am I going to feed these people? But he forgot, didn't God show him already? God then showed him all these miracles. But I know sometimes, you know, we tend to operate in the flesh and, and we tend to go back and, and start to question God. I mean, even Job got to that point where he just broke down because even the people around him started saying, okay, hold up now. We came here, we thought it was one way, but hold up now. You still messed up, you still sick, so you probably got some hidden sins in your life. See, so people are going to come at you and, and, and try to convince you that you're not doing something right and you know that you are. But what should we do? Trust and rely on God. Trust and rely on him. Yeah. Nobody should be able to come through these doors and tell you about the one whom you serve. Don't let the devil come and tell you about the God you serve. Because, again, I go back to these people that were here at one time but was manipulated and, and now they're, they're in another, I call it a cult. Anything that denounced what Jesus Christ did for us ain't nothing but a cult. Because the scripture says without the shedding of blood, there's no what? Remission of sin. So Muhammad couldn't do it. He came too late. And, and where was he when we needed someone to die for us? Where was he at? They say Muhammad is the light, but I always ask the question, then who put his lights out? So where were these people at when we needed them? And I'm going to show you the wonderful thing that God did for us. You see, because God is a spirit, not having blood, but yet God found the way because there was nobody able to fit the bill. Nobody was able to satisfy the requirement to satisfy the anger of God because there was, God had anger towards sin, but there was nobody able, nobody able to satisfy the anger of God. So it was kindled against these sacrifices these sacrifices of old. But God didn't get no glory out of none of that. No glory. And God didn't get none from us. So he wanted more of a relationship from us. But how could we do that? Because we were still separated by sin. We were just body and soul. But God did something so wonderful to us. Now he just didn't dwell with us dwelled upon us but now that Jesus Christ had died for us he now dwells in us so now we have the power 
We have the power to speak those things that be not though as though they were. Don't let the devil tell you otherwise. You got to know who you serve. There's ministries sitting here right now today. You don't know how much power you have in your little finger. You got more power in your little finger than, I mean, than, than, than Satan has in his whole body. Because he's already been defeated. You're not fighting the battle alone. But I know it feels like that at times. It feels like that. But God said he will never leave nor forsake you. I remember, a lot of y'all don't know this, but before when I, um, before I came to the church, when I, before I even went, I went through the promised land back in what, 97? But before that, you know, I don't know if y'all know, but Will, uh, he used to dress up with him and these two other guys as they call themselves the, the Blues Brothers 2000 on a mention from God. Y'all remember them? Well, Will, Will don't even remember, but he came to me and don't even remember. He, gave, he the one that gave me the pamphlet. I just came out of the club on race path. This was before, okay, this is like 96. He gave it to me, but I always held on to it. He, him and another guy, they came out there. And so I was like, yeah, I was like, uh, you know, and I asked him for a dollar. Give me a dollar. I know what I was going to do with it. I went right into the store when they left and bought me a beer. But see, Will and them, they didn't come out there with no, nothing fancy, no fancy speech or whatever, but they, was, they came out there in a bad area because it was, it was dark. It, it was surrounded by nothing but trouble. But they came out there anyway armed with the power of God. I wouldn't, where would I have been right now if he didn't trust God? Where would I have been right now? See, so a, a lot of things that you do in life, you have no idea who you affecting. I know at times, it, 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 again, it feels like you're fighting a battle alone. But even the little things, God can magnify it so great. Because where would I have been? I probably would have been dead right now. But just now, I didn't use the flyer until about three months later. But I held on to the flyer. And I remember calling up to the church. And I remember speaking to George Pond, Harriet Hill. They spoke to me. They was like, brother, if you can just make it here to the church, God will carry you the rest of the way. I remember that. What if they didn't take the time to talk to me because they didn't minister to me a short while? And then they said, well, just if you can't make it tonight, come the next day. Just the small things mean so much when you put God in it. Amen. You know, so you're not fighting it alone. So I remember coming up to the, uh, let me see, where did I come to? I came here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> then, that's right. And I'm going to tell you what they said. Listen, 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 this is the trip. I came here, my brother-in-law brought me here. Now, uh, they was working out back, and guys was walking around with, with wood chips, and he said, hold up, man, stay here. This, this might be a coat or something like that. You sit right here. <laughs> hold up. Because, you know, and, and it just so happened a lot of guys had bald heads, you know, so he was like, no, you sit right here for a minute. Then he saw Danny Banks. He said, oh, I know Danny. Oh, you in a good place. So he dropped me off there, and I didn't see Pastor Joe. But I didn't see him till I got out to the farm the next day. Now, I just heard about Pastor Joel. I went out to the farm, and I met little Tominsky, and he got me settled in. And I remember chapel. We sitting up there. We singing songs. And then all of a sudden, this man came in there with overalls on, which was Pastor Joel. So I'm thinking this is a different setting. I'm looking for a clinical setting. I'm looking for a bunch of, I don't know, people in Dr. Coates. Because on the flyer, it says they, they offer to help. Uh, to unwed uh, addiction. I mean, all, I mean, the list was so long. So I'm like, man, they got a bunch of, bunch of people here. But just a man with some overalls came in. But look what the man, I done grew up in churches and sat with preachers who didn't really have my best interest at heart because they never introduced Christ to me like this man did. Just the little things mean so much. So I said all that to say is 
Don't think that you got to go out and do something so great. Don't think that preaching behind a pulpit is so great. Just by you shaking somebody's hand at the door can go a long ways. Just by giving someone a cup of water in the name of Jesus can go a long ways. You're not fighting the battle alone. So don't feel like Moses did. You know, understand that God has been showing himself to you in your lifetime. And you know that. Some of us right now, if it wasn't for God, you wouldn't have been here right now. If it wasn't for God, I would have been probably strung out in some bar right now. But I know nobody delivered me but God. So he done showed, he done magnified himself to me. So I have to ask God to forgive me sometimes when I doubt, because I know I, I, sometimes I, you know, I do, I doubt. God, I don't, I don't see you. You know, I don't see you. Where are you, God? But sometimes God will probably go to sleep, just like Jesus did in the boat. But God expects us to remember and rely on what he said, because he only had to say it one time. Didn't I tell you I would never leave you? Didn't I say I would never forsake you? And that's all we have to do. Believe that. What he said. If there's anyone here tonight that's tired of fighting a battle by yourself. Listen, it's a losing situation. It's a losing situation. Why go through this whole life fighting like you're doing and then lose your soul and go to hell anyway? Where you won't get no rest. No rest. People are dying. I don't know how many people died already since I got up here to preach that didn't know Christ. God has given every man and woman in here the opportunity right now to share uh, God unto somebody who don't know him because he gave us all this opportunity because we could have been lost, right? Think about it. Think about where you were in that dark place. I remember being in a dark place. I remember being in this place and I just felt all alone, but then I kept hearing whispers. You notice that so many people that, that, that flip out and lose their mind because they heard, uh, they heard the wrong thing. Like, remember that guy, son of Sam, that killed all them people and he said because he heard the dog speaking next door? Why we listen to the negative things? I'm sure there was some positive stuff saying, like, you need to get a job. You know? Wasn't there some positive things? But we, we go and flip out because we listen to the negative things. Let us stand. God is so good to us. And listen, he showed himself and he's going to continue to show himself to us. He loves us. He loves us. He loves us. Let us sing.